everybody. Welcome to the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales ICW Live Lecture Series. My name is Jack. It's me again. Um, we're going to have two lecturers today. Last week, we had uh, Mr. Simon and the week before, we had Mr. Ong. So uh, today, we're going to see uh, two very important lecturers from our Sunway Test team, and uh, they are Miss Ruslina and Miss Gita. All right. So uh, first of all, my name is Jack, and I am the uh, lecturer for two of the papers, uh, three of the papers, BTF, uh, Business Technology and Finance, uh, Business Strategy and Technology, as well as uh, Strategy Business Management. So um, let me show you a little bit about uh, the subjects that we have um, in ICW, okay? And we can see uh, what are the lecturers actually teaching in this particular uh, papers. So um, we have uh, Ms. Ruslina, who is teaching accounting and uh, financial accounting and reporting in a professional level, as well as corporate reporting. Whereas Ms. Gita is uh, teaching the management information the financial management, as well as uh, strategic business management. So we have uh, two very important lecturers that are teaching the whole pillar uh, on the financial management, as well as the financial accounting. So, um, and of course, a bit of an introduction of Ms. Gita. Uh, she has over 30 years of experience in financial management and started teaching the ICW program in Sunway Test uh, in 2008, produced numerous World Prize winners, as well as 100% passes for uh, many classes. Well, uh, Ms. Rusina, Okay, with over 19 years of um, teaching experience, all right, and started teaching the ICW program in 2010 and has produced a total of nine in ICW World Prize winners with numerous groups achieving 100% passes. So let's welcome uh, Ms. Gita and Ms. Christina. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you guys How doing? Good. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, this is the first time you guys are doing this, right? Yep. <laughs> so Miss Rosina was telling me that you know, uh, doing this particular session is even more nerve-wracking than doing the CR paper the first time. <laughs> so, but I'm sure you do naturally. Right? <laughs> Your students love you a lot. <laughs> All right. So um, maybe, sorry. We'll just talk to each other. <laughs> yes, let's talk to each other. We just have fun here, okay? Um, yeah. <laughs> maybe, uh, Miss Gita, maybe you can share with us your experience uh, in some um, in some way. Test how you joined us, and then you know, from how did you actually start off with ICW? Yeah, I joined um, Sunway Test in the year two thousand. I started teaching on the ACCA program, and uh, in two thousand eight, I believe it's two thousand eight when I started to teach the uh, part-time students for ICAW. And mm -hmm. I with Rosalina, I started out in 2010 for the CFAP program. Yeah, we were the first two, I think, um, to teach on the CFAP. Um, I'm, sure, I'm not sure about all. But yeah, um, yeah so I've been teaching um, MI for a, a few sessions only. And uh, after 10 years, I must say, I came back to teach one more once um, this year in, in January, MI, uh, the, at the certificate level. So it was quite, it was quite nice after a long time. I haven't forgotten anything, but yes. Um, I say W is, um, I mean, both ACC and I say W, I teach now. I still teach and um, they're different in many ways. And they are both are fulfilling in different ways. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> what about you, Christina? Yourself, Christina? What did what about yourself? Um, um I okay, guess I start at about the same time. But maybe I can go back a little bit back earlier as to how Mr. Teo uh, actually got me so um i came back uh, from overseas with the masters and and i joined pwc and and i was a bit surprised that even with the masters i still needed to do a professional qualification so then i started my um studying for my professional qualification together at the same time working at pwc so it's a bit challenging uh but i then after that once i graduated, I got my ACCA, then uh, I went on to become a financial analyst at a MNC. And at that point, I think I was already, a, you know, it's, it's a, 
I was already quite old, I might say, and it was time to settle down. So at that point of time, Mr. Tio actually called me, my boss, and said, would you like, you know, he, he actually offered me a lecturing job and I grabbed it. And there was no turning back after that. Yeah. So I've been working since 2000 and I'm still having fun teaching my students. So, yeah. yeah that's, that's the best <laughs> thing about our job, right? We are still having fun when we're doing it. Yes. <laughs> right? Okay. Every single semester, we get very interesting students. <laughs> yeah. Keep yeah. our life interesting all the time. Very all right. as well. <laughs> okay. So um, in our previous session, right, with Mr. Ong and uh, Mr. Simon, uh, we mentioned that our syllabus helps our students to develop certain skills, you know, such as assimilation of information, uh, structuring problems and solutions, applying judgment, all right, and then from there on making conclusions, recommendations, and on top of that, we have also developed communication skills. Uh, perhaps you can share with us, right, through the subjects that you teach, right, uh, from one level to the next, like from MI to FM to the SPM paper, how the students actually develop these skills. So maybe we can start with uh, Ms. Kita. Yeah, so um, in management information, it is uh, mostly on uh, costing management accounting. So they have like four main areas, which is uh, costing and pricing, budgeting and forecasting, performance management, and decision making. At this level, they are just uh, learning uh, the techniques as a very in a very structured approach. I'm sure in many other papers, they would have heard of the word cost, for example, but in MI, they are actually going to learn what, is, what are the elements of cost. I'm just giving an example. What are the elements of cost? Instead of just using the word cost, you know, well, we value it at production cost or we value it at uh, purchases. So we need them to understand the difference between manufacturing and, uh, you know, trading. And it's, it's, uh, as I said, because I taught this paper one time this year, after 10 years, I realized that it has been um, upgraded a little bit, updated with a data analytic more, which I think you also teach. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. and uh, a lot of, there's a lot of connection because uh, if they don't have this data, you know, the, the, the businesses are constantly changing. But of course, at this level, they won't realize it. They're just learning it as a, as a, as a topic, which uh, is something quite new to them. And then when they move on to the next level, which is uh, financial management, I would say financial management is more pure, uh, but it uses decision-making techniques, but it, it is more on investments and financing and uh, risk management. So, we don't uh, actually learn, uh, I mean, the the, inf the knowledge that you acquire, let's say about fixed costs and variable costs, are, are, still applied, are still applied, but it's no longer a costing paper. Yeah, It's a, it's a finance paper. So they, they see it differently, uh, except for maybe a couple of topics, uh, there, there could be some overlaps. And when they get into the advanced stage where the SBM is, that's when everything comes together. So the information that they have acquired in uh, MI is now coming back and you know, you've got so much of data there and you need to um, explain, um, you know, um, bring everything together, both from the finance as well as the strategy perspective. So yes, that is a very uh, broad uh, subject that they have to learn. Uh, so it's very uh, structured at the certificate level, the paper, MI, and then it goes into a different kind of a structure with more application uh, at financial management, and it is just application in uh, strategic business management, yeah. So that's yeah, how the... How it works, yeah. Of course, uh, I think it also jives in very nicely with my paper, which is business strategy. Because when you are interested in uh, designing a new strategy, it is important for the uh, organization or the accountants to be uh, advising the board of directors about what kind of returns and risks that the organization will have to take on. So in terms of returns, we do your NPV calculation, net present values, your payback periods, all right, and using tools like decision trees, which is all learned from the papers that you teach them so well. 
right? And then from there on, all right, yeah. of course, they do risk management, you break even analysis and going on margin of safety. So if an accountant is were to advise the board of directors and telling them that this option or this particular decision should be made, it has to be supported by concrete figures such as, you know, what is your return on investment? What is the uh, net present value you're going to get? Payback period, when you're going to get it? And marginal safety, all those are all in the picture. Very nicely integrated from your paper to my paper and then moving up higher up. So it's all gelled yes. together very well. And, and we can see in the uh, professional level, right, there's also a little bit of integration already there. Okay, that the students are learning how to combine MIFM together with strategy and then moving on later to SPF even more. Yeah, very structured way of learning. Okay, so that's, yes. that's how this paper is done. So um, let's hear it from Rosalina, right? And um, you know how different your paper is, and then you know how why is it important that they need to have this about how they actually get here from uh, the lower level to the higher level. Okay, from your perspective. I don't think my paper is as interesting as yours. <laughs> no, we <laughs> need your paper. Very right? important. <laughs> But basically, mine is to um, kind of like tell the shareholders whatever that you guys have done, how well is it doing? Yeah, whether okay. it's you know, profitable or not. So, um, so let's talk about the three papers. So, um, in the what do you call it, certificate level, I I teach accounting. Yeah, so that's where you guys will learn the basic stuff like double entry, how to do double entry, what are the, you know, some of the year-end adjustments and very simple um, preparation of simple financial statements for uh, several business entities like so traders, partnerships, limited companies. Then, so it's it's very, um, what do you call it, very basic, yeah? So a lot of my, a lot of the students who come in actually do have accounting knowledge, so they have no issue when it comes to this paper. Uh, but then, okay for those who do not have accounting knowledge but it's still fine because we are teaching from the thought so don't worry about it those signs you know dangerous um then moving and that is mcqs purely mcqs and probably just one long question uh which actually will lead them to fir because when it comes to the second paper which is in the professional uh stage uh the financial accounting and reporting focuses more on limited companies accounts okay published accounts so then they will then learn not that many but only about 20 standards <laughs> not many <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> And they will also learn uh, the consolidation, uh, yeah, okay. how to prepare consolidated financial statements to see overall how the group performs. Yeah. So that's so the thing is about FA um the, the what do you call it? Moving from the certificate level to the professional level, the students find that there's a huge jump, okay, from MCQs, and then suddenly they are expected to just do do long questions preparing a full set of financial statements. And there's also one uh, explained question where they are required to write uh, the treatments, the effects, which, you know, like Malaysian, right? We're not that good at conveying our, you know, our kind of thoughts and yeah. So, so that's the explanation part that some of the students are having difficulty. Yeah, but, but you that, still manage to give them 100% passes, right? <laughs> Because my students are smart. Uh, but <laughs> the reason why they incorporate the explanation is because, again, then it goes on to CR, corporate reporting, in the advanced level, where all the questions require them to write. Okay. So they are exposed at the, the, the professional level of, you know, you need to write, you know, and, and, and then they slowly will learn the writing skills and, yeah, such that when they reach CR, then they should be, able to communicate their thoughts by then. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so it's at CR level that everything is integrated and uh, there's a lot of application. You need, the students need to read a lot of information, organize their thoughts, put in the judgment, and then from there, they, you know, they come up with recommendations and conclusions. Yeah, so that's at the advanced level. Uh. So right. it's built up slowly. But the thing about my paper is, Whatever they learn, like from the certificate, they need to bring it up to FAR 
and then whatever they learn in FAR, they need to bring it up to CR again. Yeah. So there's a lot of brought forward knowledge. So the students just like, I just want to study and pass, you know, that type of uh, attitude, then they're going to have problems. Lah. Mm. Yeah, a bit of yeah, difficulty when it comes to moving smoothly. I, I guess because if you talk about our qualification, uh, those people who are coming in already are quite driven. So I don't think they will just want to pass or definitely they want to become even better. So that's where I think, you know, it helps a lot. You know, our job is even easier because of that. But of course, you know, um, in how they are being integrated, like for example, when you have your financial statements done, all right, and then from there on, you know, like from, from a strategic point of view, we need to have an understanding of what has actually happened to the organization, right? And from there on, we'll use the skills from Ms. Gita's paper to do variance analysis to really appreciate, you know, what's the problem of the, what, what the problem, what is the problem the organization has in terms of, you know, it could be an inventory issue, it could be a production issue, it could be a marketing issue, but it all starts with your accounts, all right? That yep. they are able to prepare and verify that it's true and fair. And then from there on, then we compare it to the budgets and do various analysis. And with that, we will be able to understand what actually went wrong with the organization. Okay, and financial is only one of the point of view, all right, because later they will also learn about balance scorecards, all right, looking into the non-financials, how they bring all this in, we help them make decisions, okay? So I think, you know, the fundamentals, of course, your paper is where um, they built the other skills, okay? But they need to make sure that they know what the numbers are about. Like, for example, yeah. today I did a question with the students. They are supposed to talk about um, franchising. Okay. And there's a franchise fee of $25,000 for five years. So, of course, you know, the students have forgotten that they need to amortize this figure into the calculation. So then I'll ask them, don't you remember what Ms. Rosina taught you? <laughs> All right. Amortization is needed. Okay. And I will ask them, you know, which IFRS standard is that? You know, so it's all very well integrated. Okay, and especially I think when we do our SBM paper, the higher levels paper, uh, the students will even have to advise the uh, organization. If this particular company were to merge with another company, how do are we going to be reporting this in the uh, consolidated accounts? Yeah. Right? And will it be um, something that is of lesser value or higher value if we were to consolidate the company? Okay, and all that comes from your paper. All right, so you see, everything there is all integrated. And so we yeah. have to opportunity for them to integrate all the skills that we learn. But of course, the fundamental things are right, when we do with MI, the accounting, the FM, okay, the FAR, all that is supposed to make our students more competent, right, yes. so that they are able to make objective decision making. What they need to know as well is the businesses are constantly changing. Mm, yes. So they also have to be, you know, reading or watching yeah. some things. News articles, up all the new standards. These are just, Correct. you know, just a stepping stone, and it's going to be changing. So they've got to be prepared. So if they don't understand the basics, then it's going to be difficult for them to understand why. What is the change about? Correct. So that's right? where the technical competence come in. You know, if you tell people that something is wrong, you need to tell me why is it wrong. Okay, mm. so and even if you were to audit a process that is done by the data analysis, all right, whereby they are going to be using algorithms, the key here is your professional skepticism will come in and ask them, you know, why is this algorithm written in that way? All right, in what kind of accounting standards have you actually followed to actually produce a particular algorithm? So it all goes back to the fundamentals and seeing whether is this tool going to be preserving the true and value of how we're going to report. So they will have to understand how everything is all linked up together. All right. So that, that skill is very key to our students' um, you know, development. All right. So um, now let's talk about, because we have got so many students that have actually graduated, right? So let's talk about um, if students are taking on the path of financial accounting and financial management. All right. So what are the careers that they can actually venture into? And perhaps you can tell us about some of the careers that your students have actually gone into, right? And maybe some examples of some of our alumni. Hey, maybe, uh, Rusna, you want to start? If you go into that route, maybe let's say the students are really in love with your paper, okay? What kind of career uh, that can actually go into? I guess with this financial accounting, they can also be an auditor, right? Yeah. And I've got a few students that... I mean, not ex-students that, that they are now 
are currently residing in UK and they're attached with the big five. So they're doing very, very well. Um, there's, there's a few, I mean, several of them that's in Singapore. And then I've got people, I've, I've got art students who actually chose not to do audit, but to do the corporate. Yeah, so they are, they are in um, some companies doing, yeah, doing the financial accounting part. But they all don't reach at a, uh, at a position where they are not into like bookkeeping or things like that, but rather to think of strategies of how to improve the company. Yeah, so it's more on business decisions, making business decisions. And when they do that, they would have to also think about what is the impact on, yeah, based on the standards, what, what, the, what, will, what effect will it have on the financial uh, statements. Yeah, so it's very relevant, uh, I would say, for the job scope that they need very good uh, IFRS knowledge. <laughs> So with, with you know all these two three papers, they should already have pretty much quite good knowledge. It's just that like what he does, so it's always changing the environment. So there's gonna be new standards coming in, and they would have to learn it up. Yeah, somehow. Constantly learning. Day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's there's a yeah. Yep. Yeah. So what about you, Miss Gita? Any of your students have actually ventured into different uh, path that, uh, you know, not in the audit or accounting? I mean, the ones who don't like to do auditing or tax, you know, those kind of uh, subjects, I mean, they don't want to venture into those areas. They have gone straight into a finance related, like, uh, you know, they go and work in the investment bank or... Okay. Uh, they will, they will pursue some more qualifications like CFA, for instance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they will go into, you know, those related areas like private equity. And, yeah. uh, and generally, I think when they, when they reach a certain position, they are in, in, a, in a position to actually, like, advise people what to do, you know, mm -hmm. financial analysts um, or a credit analyst if they're working in a bank, for instance. So that, that's a kind of, that's one category of students who do that. It means outrightly they will not go into, you know, audit or accounting. There's another one, uh, another type who will do the mandatory <laughs> auditing um, okay. that they need for their, you know, uh, qualification to get their, you know, fellowship and all that. And after that, they venture into businesses. So we have, I mean, we have students who are like, not even um, like, I mean, they're accountants, but they are do doing very different things now. Yeah. So they, that's because I think accounting helps them to, to understand how to, you know, run the business and the problems that they're going to face. Yeah. So, yeah, we have, to, I've got two categories of students who, who have, uh, who've done that. I think it's very important that um, if you want to run a business, it's so important that they understand where the cash comes from and how do you keep track of it and being accountable to it. And of course, you know, how to grow your cash and both your papers are basically the foundations of how, you know, this is being managed. So it's not just only about preparing your accounts, but you still need to know how to uh, manage the money, right? Not just only from a paper basis, but also on a cash basis, you know, decision making, like, you know, how to cost your products, how you price your products, all that is all part and parcel of the things that they learn within your papers. Strategy, right? so, your strategy, right? Yes, that's right. Strategy, definitely. Yeah. So if you want to strategize something, you have to first of all understand, you know, what's your current positioning, and your current positioning will all be told by the, the accounts that they, they learn from Miss Rissingan's place uh, papers. And then from there on, we also have to see how is it going to compare to the budgets and how are we going to be performing and forecast for the future. And that's where we learn from uh, Miss Gita's classes. And with that, you know, how do you fund the business? What kind of investment appraisals that we need to go through? Okay, and how do we actually go ahead with a uh, particular decision of um, planning your organization's uh, strategies? All this, it's all about, you know, integrating all the skills. Okay, I always think that, you know, um, we have historical analysis, which is Ms. Rusna's paper, but also you need to also plan forward, which is Ms. Gita's paper. So with this, a combination of the past, we learn from it, and then the future, you will know how to move forward better so that we have better numbers to show, all right, to our shareholders in the future. 
So this is what we do constantly on a yearly basis, right? And you know, both these papers are so important. Okay, so um, very interesting. The little uh, the in depth of how the papers actually work. Um, and of course, one more very important question. Since um, the two of you have produced so many world prizes and uh, hundred percent passes. Uh, do you have any study tips for your students who want to be a successful chartered accountants? Work hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have to work right. hard. There's no short. There's no shortcuts. All right. Yeah? There's no yes, yes, yes. We are yep. all the same. I mean, that's what we will tell them, right? Yep. It's the fundamentals that need to get them right. Okay. Yeah. The principles are the key. I, what do we teach them? In the uh, recent years, the fundamentals, the ethical fundamentals, right? In the first day, what's the accounting principles? You know, the, the consistency, the prudence, that's the fundamental things that they learn first. Do they even know that? And then with that, the, the values that they bring with it, that's, that's the key. What about any, any, any advice from Ms. Rislina? Today, my student was asking me, yeah, what's, uh, the, what's the key to passing the FAR? I said, come and listen to my talk tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I normally tell them at the start lah, but somehow this round I didn't I didn't tell them but I guess everyone should know but anyway I've come up with uh, a mnemonics champs okay, you know, since okay. Month, okay they should be champs so C right. is um, what do you call it it's consistent okay do study consistently don't do last minute yeah All H right. is homework okay whenever your lecturer give you homework please do it yes okay. it's a must yeah, to do homework because that's how you gain your practice. And then um, A, attend classes, very important. Okay, attend every class and especially revision because that's where we would focus the more important areas that are coming out in exams. Then um, mnemonics. Okay, I do use mnemonics in class, uh, my maps, so that they can remember better. And you know, I was quite pleased during my TR class recently that I, when I asked them what are the criteria, and then they, they can actually repeat back, the, yeah, using the mnemonics that they they've learned from me uh, at the FER level, and that's three years ago, you know. So I yeah, so yeah, mnemonics, and then okay. P makes, makes perfect, obviously. So one of my oh, I actually talked to one of my very early uh, World Pride. I asked her, obviously the, the secret must be, you have to ask from the actual World, world Prizes. Prize. Yeah, world, world Prize winners. So she said that, you know, she actually did the question back three times. So guys, okay. if you want to get a World Prize, <laughs> then you have to do the question back three times. Three times. Which is practice, practice, practice. Lah. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, yeah, software, skills it's yep. really a must you must practice yeah using the surpass software which is what you're going to use in exam and that should be what you need okay. to pass all right let me repeat <laughs> again eh? consistency homework attend classes <laughs> hopefully more face to face ah, right yes. <laughs> and of course using mnemonics all right mm -hmm. and practice makes perfect all right, and of course, practice it on a surpass because that's where they're going to be using it. Okay, so if you are taking your exam on surpass, you have to practice on surpass. That's exactly what I told my students. Okay, yeah. so yeah, that's good. Very good advice. Okay, great. So um, <laughs> maybe we could ask, get some questions from the floor and see, you know, if you yeah. have any questions. Yep. Go on, Jean. Hi. Hi, Young Jin. So that's probably directed to me, huh? Uh -huh. Um, <laughs> I would say it's a, a huge jump again from FAR to CR. Uh, CR is an integrated paper. So it has both financial reporting as well as audit element. So yeah, you must be you must know both lah, in order to do well in CR. And I guess, again, it's practice, you know, you just have to do the questions in the QB, the, the past year questions, and get used to how the exam questions are being structured and answered. Yeah. And I'm sure you can do it. Lah. Just, 
So go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Consistently do homework and attend classes. All right, and listen to Miss Rosina's mnemonics and keep practicing the past year questions. And that's the way that you can pass the paper. <laughs> and you apply the same techniques. Apply the same techniques on SBM, and when you go off the case study, same thing. All right, now this guitar. All papers. Yeah. All papers is the same thing. So we can use that now, yeah. Students, yes. guys. <laughs> that's good. Any other questions, people? Okay, I hope you you uh, answered your question, Yong Jin. Practice more past year question. Yep. So perhaps um while we wait for the next question, right, Miss Rusina, do you have yeah. any like personal motto that you know you want to share with your students? Hmm. Um I guess my personal motto is always strive to be your best. Lah. Do your best. Yeah. So don't stop, you know, even though I've been teaching so many years, but I will always still try to see where I can fine tune, make improvement to my notes, you know, incorporate more questions. Uh, and yeah, so I guess everybody, you know, have, should have this type of attitude so that you will do great in whatever that you do okay miss gita i uh, i'm a bit you know uh, a bit ocd like so whatever i whatever i try to do i try to do it near perfect and uh, I think, and i think everyone should try to do something like that i mean we always uh, we always say the japanese are always very you know, prim and proper. They get everything right, and then they have come up. Uh, they've come up with uh, so many uh, techniques, like uh, get it right the first time. <laughs> There's no yep, waste, yep. and we can do it. We just have to spend some time just thinking, planning how to do it. You know, and not do a, a slipshod way of uh, of uh, work. So if we do something like that properly, we don't have to come back to it and and mm. and rectify our problems, right? Yeah. You, sure. always right, go, you always have to try to do your stuff, whatever it is. You know, even if you don't like that job, uh, it, it could be a short stint, but do it properly. And, and right. then you move on so that you don't have to come back and nobody is going to have, uh, you know, nobody is going to have a bad feeling about you. Right? right correct. So, yes, you, yes. That's yeah, smart. I believe that, you know, uh, understanding, you know, what is your personal branding that you want to let people know. Because you know, by being able to constantly learn and constantly improve yourself, right, and to be, you know, um, ensuring that whatever that you do, like what Miss Gita say here, uh, is that you need to ensure uh, that you show the best to people, and that's your very important personal branding. That's a very important thing, okay? Because you know, what what is left of you after all your riches is basically only your name. All right. So, who do you remember? What, who do you remember, Miss Gita as? Who do you remember, uh, Miss Rosina as? All right. What what, what kind of branding would you want to be? Okay. Yeah, and Jack. <laughs> All right. So, you know, what kind of legacy that you want to leave? Okay. Is it a good one or is it a bad one? All right. That's very important. That's your own personal brand. Okay. So, I guess um, that's it for tonight, because uh, okay. no more questions coming in. Okay. Uh. I think that's all for today. All right. Nice sharing Thank you very session, much, everybody. Yeah. Okay, it was Thank a good session. You. All right. Okay. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you again. Bye. See your students Bye. in college. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye